Sponsored by WinWin Technologies. Introducing the Orion F16EX POTAS. Also available as separate joystick and throttle sets. Or the stick and throttle grip components. Hello valued viewers, I hope you're all doing very well. Today's war game request is Modern vs Iwo Jima. Now there weren't any nice battles in World War II, they were all terrible. And this is no exception. For me it's one of the most interesting battles for all the wrong reasons. There were just so many casualties on both sides. It really was hell on earth or as close as you could get to it. So today we're going to reenact the Battle of Iwo Jima, February 1945, and ask the question, could modern technology have saved lives? First, some basic information about the Battle of Iwo Jima. The invasion was on 19th of February 1945, and the battle for the island lasted five weeks, which is amazing because it is a tiny island, just a few miles across, about the size of an English village. Onto that village was packed over 20,000 Japanese troops and over 100,000 American troops. Now, the battle lasted five weeks. Like we said, we are just going to model D-Day. In fact, just a part of D-Day. The United States won the battle, although it's considered a pariah victory because the losses were astonishing for the US as well as obviously the Japanese. And at the end of it, it wasn't considered a tactical success. Still, historians argue about whether the bloodshed was actually worth it. The strength of the forces, 110,000 US Marines all up, plus 500 ships. The Japanese were defending with about 21,000 troops, just 23 tanks, 438 artillery pieces, 33 naval guns, 69 anti-tank guns, 300 small anti-air guns. They actually had runways as well and aircraft, but they were destroyed during the bombing. And the casualties and losses, as we said, were horrendous. The Japanese first, almost everyone died. Up to 18,500 claimed dead and missing, 200 taken prisoner, and a few thousand in hiding at the end that carried on or eventually gave up. Unfortunately, it was the doctrine of the time for the Japanese to fight to the death, and so one of the many reasons why this was so costly. Casualties on the US side, 27,000 casualties to take this tiny little island, as well as 500 sailors were above. One escort carrier was sunk, one fleet carrier severely damaged, 137 tanks destroyed, and 153 aircraft destroyed. So, we have to ask the question, why did the Americans have so many losses, more than the Japanese, when they had absolute air superiority for weeks before the invasion? This was carpet bombed, the whole island of carpet bombed, Suribachi was carpet bombed. During the invasion, complete air superiority. The main reason why the Americans had such losses was due to the genius of the main general, Tadamichi Kuribayashi. He was assigned to the island to prepare the defence. His defence was very controversial amongst his own ranks. He opted, instead of a stand-up fight, more like we saw in D-Day, Normandy, over in Europe, he set a trap. He predicted where the Americans landed, and we can see they landed from here, green, up to blue one on the southern beachfront. He then waited for the US Marines to fully populate the beach before even firing a Japanese shot. He had stationed along the rear of the beach, along here, just a few pillboxes with machine guns in them. That wasn't ever expecting to keep the US at bay for long. It was just there to keep the Marines on the beach while the trap was set. The trap was, once the beach had completely been filled with Americans, they would open fire with their combined artillery, hidden on the northeastern front of the volcanic Mount Suribachi here, as well as here, here, here and partially here on the island. All of the guns were sighted and timed to hit along the beach. They all fired at once, including the pillboxes. Everything opened up on the beach and the beach became an absolute bloodbath. Thousands of Americans were wiped out. So it was very sad, but very clever planning from the Japanese. So you have to say at this point, well, why couldn't the Americans do something about this? Well, they tried. Like I said, they carpet bombed the island. One of the things I thought about looking at today would be sending in a B-52 arc light mission to grid square, remove this island. They did it with their B-29s, B-17s, and it didn't work. Why didn't it work? Again, due to uh, Kuribayashi's tactics, he had his Japanese dig 
into the mountains and into the ground. They're all underground. As well as that, the guns in Mount Surabiachi and other areas were actually placed on retractable rails so that they could poke out of the mountain, shoot, then be brought back in by the infantry, and then blast shutters closed so that the guns couldn't be spotted. Or if they could, the artillery of the day couldn't damage them. It was, like I said, genius defending. So even though Surabiachi was bombed day and night, the guns were still intact. So, first we're going to run a reenactment as best we can as it was. Then we're going to rerun it with some added technology from modern day and seeing how it could have been beaten. For that, just some pictures. I don't know if these are kind of real action pictures or whether they were kind of staged afterwards. We see an LST up to the beach here, dismounted vehicles, uh, the Higgins boats, and this was the beach here. It was uh, another problem was it was volcanic black ash. So they couldn't even dig foxholes like they usually would in dirt. It was literally the worst possible attacking scenario there, Surabayachi there. And one thing to think about is the really close ranges involved here, less than a mile to Surabayachi. Some people, it was just a few hundred feet, which is crazy. Another action scene here, again, I'm not sure if it was staged or if it was real Surabayachi there. The men in the volcanic ash here, um, artist rendition there. Um, a lot of the fighting was done with flamethrowers from tanks and flamethrower units because it was such close, dirty warfare. And we can see uh, one of the many pictures of troops to the top of Sarabiachi when it was captured. So let's have a look at our rendition here. Now, we can't run the whole battle, obviously. I can't simulate 20,000 Japanese and 110,000 Marines. It's just not possible. So we're going to take a small snapshot. Also, we don't have Iwo Jima, so we've having to be creative. What we do have is this stretch of volcanic beach here, which is pretty similar, actually, to what we need. 1.6 miles long. It's at the right orientation, just like we need. And the depth is just about right as well. The beaches, as they were... In real life, green, red, red 2, yellow 1, yellow 2, and blue 1. Those are the correct sizes. We're going to just simulate Green Beach today. Green Beach was uh, the 5th Marine Division, just under 26,000 men, under the overall command of Major General Keller Rocky. Green Beach that we're looking at today had around 6,000 men land in total. 6,000 men, again, is a little bit too much for us, so we're just going to do the first wave. The first wave was 10 Higgins boats, as we call them, LCVPs. Each of these carries about 40 troopers, uh, 40 marines. So what's going to happen is our first wave here, 10 boats, is going to charge the uh, volcanic beach. Once it reaches there, the marines are going to spawn in, basically. They're just going to appear. They are going to be 400 M1 Garand infantry. As soon as they're up, they're going to charge at maximum speed towards the island and try and get off the beach, which, of course, is what they wanted to do. As well as that, just simulating Green's naval side. We've got a whole load of LSTs and we've got destroyers as well. I was thinking about putting in battleships because there were battleships, there were aircraft carriers, there was everything here. Huge fleet, but I thought let's just keep it simple. Uh, we also have air cover of F4U Corsairs and the closest we can get to that. In terms of defences, we've got some Japanese pillboxes down here. Like I said, the pillboxes, they were there just to keep the Marines on the beach while the artillery did the killing. In terms of Surabachi, because we're only simulating one small element of the attack, we're just having one small element of Surabachi's defences, just less than a tenth of the total guns on Surabachi, roughly the right calibre, but near enough. We've tried every which way to kind of dig them into the mountain and hide them like they were in real life. Can't do it in game, so we'll just plonk them on the mountain. It's the best we can do. When the time is ordered, they will open up and hit the marines that's it i don't think we need any predictions we know what's going to happen stand by for the first reenactment welcome to the reenactment you can imagine this being even bigger we've already got fire going up there pounding surabashi our fleet of corsairs the naval bombardment The naval bombardment was time to stop just before the men hit the beach. And it was actually thought, according to Kurobayashi's doctrine of holding fire, the Americans actually thought the Japanese had been beaten by the initial bombardment until Kurobayashi's guns opened up when the men were on the beach. Unfortunately, when a defending force is dug in so, so well, 
very hard to dislodge them with this type of fire. Japanese completely holding their fire. Pillboxes are not firing. The artillery on Suribashi is not firing. The artillery in the rear of the island is not firing. Okay. The uh, bombardment stopped. The men are about to disembark the Higgins boats. Disembarking now. There they are. 400 Marines in the first wave. Green Beach. Japanese are now opening fire. The Marines are pinned down on the beach. Surabi Archie is opening fire. The guns. Pincer has been achieved. Of course they're down. The artillery's landing. Deadly shrapnel and blast effect. Absolutely destroying the American wave. Okay, Simba, that's enough. Pause the server, please. Okay, server paused. I love it how we can just rerun history like this. It's crazy. And we can see, to no surprise, uh, although these boats survived okay, they do actually have some kind of frontal armor, I think. One Marine survived. One Marine survived. Did you see that? Freaking hero. He's managed to make it into the trees. But the 399 other Marines have been absolutely wiped out. Now, I think damage blast to infantry is a little bit overmodeled in DTS, so maybe they wouldn't have died that easily. But there was 399 bodies there caused by that artillery, which you can see is still firing up there from Suribachi. Come out of their little, little encampment. That's it. Devastating, horrific, and that's why I said it was hell on earth, basically. You were trapped in this bloodbath on the beach. Horrendous. Let's go back to the planning board and see what we can do with some modern technology. We've talked about how are we going to take these guns out. The boys think that they could go in with modern aircraft, maybe a Harrier, maybe an A-10 or something like that, and take them out. And uh, I'm not entirely sure. So we're going to be extra safe. We're going to bring out the big guns. The main problem I've got is A, finding them. In DCS, they're going to be easy to find because they're not hidden. In real life, they would have been hidden. So I am going to take this guy here. It's a drone. He has a FLIR, a forward-looking infrared uh, sensor here. He is going to use that very modern FLIR to find the guns, even when they're hidden. He can use that to pick up the heat of the guys operating the guns, um, even behind screens. You know, he's not going to be firing any weapons. He's going to be translating information, lat longs, MGRS coordinates of those guns, which are more or less static and non-movable, back to the fleet via data link. That is going to get taken back to just one. 1980s is not even particularly modern. It's only 40 years since the war. Uh, Ticonderoga here, who happens to be equipped with multiple uh, BGM-109 Bravo Tomahawks. If you want something to die, to really die, send it a Tomahawk. 
it's a massive missile with a massive warhead and it can have a penetrating warhead as well. I'm not sure if the boys with the Harrys and their Warthogs would have been able to get through the blast doors. They think they can. I, I don't really know. You would need a big penetrating warhead that you could send in laterally. But because I really want these guys to die, I'm going to send in the BGM 109s. Like I said, huge uh, penetrating warhead. These things will go through hardened bunkers, through 20 feet of reinforced concrete. And so well, to make sure, we're going to send in these Tomahawks. Everything else will be the same. But uh, as soon as Reaper sent his information back to uh, Ticonderoga, he's going to start rippling his Tomahawks, who are going to hopefully take out the artillery pieces, even though they're protected and they've not been wheeled out yet, in time for the Marines to get shoreborne. I haven't run this yet, but mm, I'm pretty sure it's going to work. Uh, any predictions from my boys? Death. Yeah, Connage. I think more Marines will survive this trip. I would certainly hope so. Stand by. Off we go. Predator drone, finding the target. Silent but deadly. Back to the fleet. Our little Ticonderoga is firing already. Look at that. Firing over the fleet. Up go the BGMs. Tomahawk, not a weapon to be messed with. Oh, I've got a bird's eye view here, boys. Good hit, Warbird. Again, you'd have to imagine these guys are dug right in to the mountain. Sometimes even the muzzles of the barrels not visible to the outside. Yet modern tech will find them through their heat signature. Oh, huge penetrator warheads just atomizing, atomizing everything around them. But you can see in the distance, 20 miles away. Ooh. Okay, let's see how the fleet, in they go, look. One at a time, bang, bang, bang. Let's see how the uh, Marines are doing. Okay, how's the war at the front? Marines are in, Marines are in. One, there they go. They like to take their time, you see. Keep the support going, Corsairs. If anything else, just trying to get the fire off the men. <clears throat> well, the good thing is, no artillery has landed. Not a single gun has fired. And that's because they're all dead. Good rockets, good rockets, keep that up. Come on, get your flame units in there. Ah, yes, look, we've got a flanking manoeuvre along the western side. They're getting through, they're getting through. This is excellent news. Go 400, little man. Okay, guys, I need you to hold your fire. I need you to hold your fire because um, we're now merged in with the pillboxes. Grenades, flaming units are going into those pillboxes. We're now behind the pillboxes in some cases. Oh, we're pretty much off the beach, guys. Pretty much off the beach. On the western flank, uh, there is not company, there's a platoon that's got right behind the bunkers. Go, soldier. Be brave. I think the bunkers might be a slightly over modelled, but. This guy would take down a bunker easy. He looks like a kind of guy who could go in with a grenade. Okay, Simba, pause the simulation. 
Right, thank you. Oh, I was just getting shot. There were still losses, but if you look, two platoons have now actually reached the bunkers. Once you've reached the bunker, that's it, it's dead. You know, put a grenade in it, a couple of grenades in it, it's dead. So the, it did hold them back for a bit, but nothing like with the artillery coming in, in which they were just wiped out. So absolute proof of concept. Bringing a modern technology in uh, with the Predator and its data link and its FLIR, hooking it up to a 1980s uh, uh, cruiser, just atomizing all of the defences with their penetrator Tomahawk warheads, won the battle, you know, 10 times easier. Uh, losses, rather than 27,000, well, 20,000 for 7,000 didn't die on the first thing alone, but as a proof of concept, I would say that would have saved thousands of lives if it could have been here. I think that was a really interesting bit of simulating there. Anything you guys want to add? No, it was good fun. Roger, I hope you enjoyed our take on Iwo Jima, guys. Maybe we'll get an Iwo Jima map one day. That would be cool. And we do some more reenactments. I hope you enjoyed and we'll see you later.